Hey everybody, Blue here, and I'm going to be showing you guys our deck profile for Seeker. So, Seeker's deck is actually one of the first decks we ever built for this channel. Actually, arguably, it was before this even was a channel, when we were just building character decks for ourselves. Um, so, this is one of our really, really original decks. And while it really hasn't changed since the beginning, we're doing deck profiles for everybody that's going to be featured in our Block of Battle City Duels. So that some of our older characters, even if they haven't changed, they're going to get newer, cleaner deck profiles. Because um, some of these videos are really old, as well as characters are going to have modified decks. Seeker's uh, one of my favorite characters, um, which led to why he was one of the first characters that was built. Uh, I always loved the whole multiple Exodias, and he used some really cool looking monsters. So that led to him being um, with Yugi and Joey and Kaiba, just some of the very first decks um, before we even got into a lot of the whole, you know, business with the deck waves. Uh, which is also why we're doing the Battle City like this is because we didn't have a wave to kind of go through it chunks at a time, like the Lost Kingdom, for example. Um, it was very scattered throughout, so this way we can really refine it, bring it together. So, Seeker's deck, of course, is going to be three copies of every Exodia piece. Head, arms, legs, um, there's really, that's just definitely how his deck is. He stressed in the anime that he had multiple copies in the dub. It was that he had them marked with invisible ink, and he had X-ray contact lenses to see through the paint, the marked backing. Uh, very, very in um, you know, fiction. Whereas um, in the sub, his cards were actually counterfeited. So they changed up the reason why, but regardless of the fact, was he cheated. So uh, Seeker is one of the first of the real rare hunters that we saw. Um, because Keith was kind of more like a puppet, so was Strings, but Keith definitely wasn't really into their cause. They found him and used him as a tool, um, or I feel. So Seek was really the first one who got in there, was trying to snatch up rare cards, so he dueled Joey. Um, and speaking of, now, there's kind of two versions you saw of Seeker's deck um, in the duels, in these Battle City duels, is that... When he first duels Joey, he didn't have that red eyes card. When he duels Yugi, he then has the red eyes card, but loses it. Now, our Seeker deck, since the beginning, has always included that red eyes card. So, I have it here, but I will also touch on the substitution card that would make Seeker's deck go, you know, either post-duel with Joey or pre-duel with Joey. Likewise, you could say with Yugi too, that... After Gilzuki, he does not have the red eyes again. Um, regardless, so our standard deck for Seeker does have that red eyes because that was the one duel we saw him. Even though he never summoned it, he would have had it. Even if it wasn't in his deck, we do have it here. So that's that. Going through, he used some of the same monsters that Yugi did in the beginning, or um, sorry, not used, but they were seen in his deck. A lot of the cards we have for Seeker are really what was seen in his deck. And while some of them are like definitely played by Yugi and you kind of could wonder how um, authentic they really were regardless when Yugi looks through his deck we take that to be that those are the cards in Seeker's deck Delta and I are very careful with picking cards that are seen in decks and hands because oftentimes they are filler cards and you know you can just look at them and kind of figure out that they're wrong most notably uh, the sighting of Obelisk in Arcana's hand um, in his duel with Yugi. So, Giant Soldier of Stone goes along with that. It wasn't something that he summoned. Um, and we did see him do two duels. And unfortunately, from the first duel with Joey, they don't make much of those cards. His strategy overall was very orientated on defense. Um, although against Yugi, it was more prominent. Against Joey, he kind of just stalled a few turns. So, Three-Headed Guido is a two of in this deck. However, because it's a two of, any of the other cards that are also two ofs, you really could throw in a third one if you wanted um, to replace that red eye. So three headed Gito works. We also have two Burfo Mat, so you could bump up, bump that up to a third. 
Your Golem was one of the more prominent monsters in his duel with Yugi. That and um, Stone Statue of the Aztecs were his real um, defense. So the one we did triple up was Hamble Necromancer. Because of all the monsters, I mean, it has the highest defense. Um, but I'm like barred from it. This isn't a tribute. But most of this is actually my like my favorite monster. Um, ever since it debuted in the anime, I just thought it was really cool. Um, this is this big blue monster with yellow claws. And I was like super happy when they finally came out with this as a printed card. Because um, so many cards have still yet to make the printed list. I was really grateful that this card did. Um, and mostly because of that, our version for Seeker, um, that we don't really use, because again, our standard build for him has the red eyes, our alternative build for the tournament has three Necromancers. But again, it could be three of any of the other cards that were two of. Um, so it's very arbitrary, and some of these other decks where we change around the cards, it's really arbitrary, because there's, you know, some decks have... A couple options of cards you could add a second one or a third one of and it might influence the deck a bit but overall not as much they're very minor edits so finishing up the monsters as i had said before is stone statue of the aztecs um this and your golem also cards i really like the art is really cool um and i think that that first duel had a lot of impression on me because a lot of the monsters I could tell you are my favorite, like Beta and uh, Gazelle, were things that made appearances in that first duel. So then the last cards are his three Graceful Charity and his three Swords of Revealing Light. Um, because his whole plan really is just to just drop down um, his defensive monsters, his swords to protect him, and then those Gracefuls to draw into Exodia. Um, so you could really see though watching that duel, his deck is very monster heavy. It's very based on just stalling. Um, so it's not, you know, a crazy complicated deck. It really is a very basic deck. Despite that though, despite really just kind of banking on uh, stalling to win and the Drug Zodia, um, we do get a, a pretty good success rate with it, especially because with some of the defense monsters in there, it's hard to crack those for, um, some decks. So, this is, um, our deck profile for Seeker. So, really had a, a small part in the anime, but nonetheless, I think he was a really cool duelist. He had some really cool monsters. Um, and I think for a lot of people, he was also still memorable, um, because of the Exodia pieces, even though actually, um, sometimes he's not even listed as Seeker, he's listed as, like, Rare Hunter, because his name was not, um, as prominent as, like, Strings or definitely Arcana, Lumis Numbra. So, his name was Seeker, he was also Rare Hunter, and like the duel with Bandit Keith, Seeker also made use of cheating, which became a bit of a theme with the Rare Hunters, because... They're the bad guys. They're going to win by whatever they need. So I don't know why I'm really, really surprised that they play fair. So Seeker's deck, lots of Exodia, lots of defense. And again, um, one of the oldest decks on our channel. So definitely stay tuned for more stuff from um, the, our Battle City Duels and Battle City Deck Profiles. So like, comment, subscribe. See you guys.